Good morning and welcome to our service of worship today on this beautiful Sunday morning. Today is the second Sunday in this season of preparation for the celebration of the resurrection at Easter. A special welcome today to everyone who is worshiping with us through this worship video. Today in our gospel reading, we hear again the story of Jesus, the very difficult story of Jesus telling the disciples not only what it means to be the Messiah, but also what it means to be a follower of Jesus. We will reflect on that homily, uh, we will reflect on that passage in our homily today. Our service continues with our opening hymn. Come to me, all pilgrims thirsty, drink of water I will give. If you knew what gift I offer, you would come to The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you.
Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings and people shall come from her. Here ends the reading. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Let your steadfast love come to us, O The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. 
In one of his classic teachings, the Buddha tells his disciples that understanding his instruction is like picking up a poisonous snake in the wild. It's all too easy to get bitten. In fact, he says, it's entirely possible to misinterpret his teaching to mean the opposite of what he actually intends. Not 10 degrees to the left or 20 degrees to the right, but 180 degrees off target, the reverse of what he means. If you pick up a snake in the middle of its body, it can easily turn and bite. But if you get a forked stick and pin the snake behind its head and then pick up the snake just behind its jaws, you'll be safe and sound. So it is with understanding my teaching, says the Buddha. It's not a matter, not simply a matter of hearing the teaching or being able to recite it. It's about holding it in the right way. In our gospel reading this morning, we come face to face with arguably, arguably the most difficult, challenging, and dangerous of Jesus' teachings. The idea that Jesus must suffer, die, and rise again. And that anyone who seeks to be his follower or disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. The disciples are perplexed by this teaching. Peter's offended and Jesus takes them to task for misunderstanding him. So we should be cautious about whether or not we understand him ourselves. There's snakes snither, slithering in the grass here. And if the disciples are any indication, mistaken conclusions abound. Well, just before our reading begins, Peter declares Jesus to be the Messiah. And so it appears that for once he gets it right, but not so fast. As if sensing that Peter might have something quite different in mind, Jesus describes in the beginning of today's reading the true nature of Messiahship. In response, Peter takes Jesus aside and rebukes him. You see, in first century Palestine, a prevailing view was that the Messiah would come and lead a military triumph, routing the Roman occupiers and restoring the great Davidic, Davidic monarchy. Peter may well have been thinking along these lines. At any rate, he has no stomach for the notion that the Messiah would be disgraced by suffering and death. But Jesus understands Messiahship differently. His vision is similar to the prophet Isaiah's suffering servant, a mysterious figure who will deliver God's people, not with swords and chariots, but rather through his own affliction and suffering on behalf of others, through pouring himself out unto death and ultimately through his eventual exaltation. The thing is, there are plenty of snakes in the grass here, plenty of ways to get bitten. One way is to understand messiahship as Peter seems to, in terms of military triumph and self-centered gain. Today, that seems to be what some of the Christian nationalism is about in our country. Another is the myth of redemptive violence, the idea that suffering itself can save. Yet another is the notion that we're called to pursue suffering as a way to participate in Jesus' passion. All three of these ideas are diametrically opposed to the gospel and should be called out as such. True messiahship is about compassion, not conquest. Suffering doesn't save, rather God saves. 
And one of the things God saves us from is our destructive ideas about the redemptive powers of violence and suffering. Likewise, Jesus doesn't call us to pursue or prolong suffering. Rather, he calls us to end or alleviate suffering whenever it's possible. Denying ourselves, taking up the cross, and following Jesus is always challenging. Letting go of our illusions and opening up to new life is continually demanding. Unfurling our self-centered lives into lives of love is an ongoing struggle. Giving instead of grasping, generosity instead of vengeance, is persistently challenging. In short, living in relationship with God pushes us to grow. Accordingly, as we follow Jesus this Lent, we may well feel growing pains, but in the end, we may be transformed through the struggle. We may receive a new identity, a new role, or even a new name. And with Abraham and Sarah, we may catch ourselves laughing with incredulous delight at the wonders God has done. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you intending to creation's well-being. O oh God, we bring our prayers to you.
over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Where the sin of racism permeates our cultures and institutions, change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and justice. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Oh God, we bring our prayers to you. Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, or oppression. Accompany all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving, especially those we name out loud or hold in the quiet of our hearts. God, we bring our prayers to you. Trust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Would you share that peace with one another?
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right, our greatest joy, to give thanks and praise to you, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You established your everlasting covenant with all living creatures, setting your bow in the clouds as a sign of your promise that the waters would never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. And now I invite you to hold up your piece of bread or cracker. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As one community, let us eat of the bread of life. I invite you to hold up your cup of wine or juice. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As one community, let us drink of the cup of salvation. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Yeah.
forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.